Hello and welcome to the garden. Well today I'm going to tackle the summer pruning of my apples and pears. So these are cordons and this sort of pruning is applicable to cordons, espaliers, stepovers, anywhere you want to do spur pruning in the summer. So these trees are pruned twice a year. There's the summer pruning where I'm removing this year's whippy growth and then there's the winter pruning where you do some more structural work and review the overall state of the trees, thinning out spur systems and so on. Now they're actually quite different processes. So the winter pruning is a little bit more tricky because um, it requires a lot more judgment. It's easy to state the, the goals, the things that you're trying to achieve, not very easy to establish some simple rules you could follow in order to achieve those goals. Summer pruning, it's dead easy. There are three simple rules that if you follow them, you're gonna do a pretty good job. So I thought I'd go over those three rules and show you what I'm doing here. The first point though, is about timing when you should do this. And typically that would be say, um, probably no earlier than mid July through towards the end of August. And there are two things you can look for on the, the new growth to decide whether it's a sensible time to prune. So th this, this growth here is, is very green and, and whippy, but if we go back to the, the base of this new shoot, um, we're looking for woody stuff near the base. And if the bottom, I don't know, quarter to a third of the branch is already quite woody, that's a good sign that um, these are ready to be pruned. Perhaps an even better indicator um, is to look at the tips of the shoot. So at some point, probably in August, these shoots will stop actively growing. So they'll be terminated in a bud, very often a fruit bud. So you'd look at a number of these shoots and if the majority of them have now terminated, then it's probably safe to prune these and you're not likely to get too much regrowth. And that's something ideally we'd like to avoid. So if I show you a close up of these shoots, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera, but you can see that this shoot here and, and this other one have finished growing. That appears to be a young fruit bud developing there. Um, this one though, which is a, a more vertical shoot, that's still growing. We've got young leaves at the end here. And well, there are a few of these, but really not very many. Um, I, I would say the majority of these have now finished growing. So I think it's a sensible time to start the pruning. So I mentioned these three simple rules, but there are of course the usual pruning jobs that you need to take care of pretty much every time you prune a tree and that is to remove suckers and then the three D's, damaged, diseased and dead wood. If you see any of that, you've got to cut that out. And that, that kind of goes without saying, that's a routine thing that you would do whether you're pruning in the, the summer or the winter. But the three rules are all about how much to shorten these new shoots. And in fact, there are really only two rules and one exception. So let's say you've got a cordon like I have here. It's got one main stem. Now, if a shoot is coming off of the main stem, then you cut that shoot back to three buds past the basal cluster. And I'll, I'll go into that in a little more detail in a minute. If this shoot is coming off a side shoot, so th this is not coming off of the main stem, then you cut it back to one bud past the basal cluster. Those two rules will serve you for most of the cases that you'll come across. The third rule, which as I said, is, is more of an exception really than a rule is 
if you find a short length of wood, how much is short? Uh, six to eight inches at the most, I would say, that is terminated in a fruit bud, then it's not too bad to leave that one alone. You, you can shorten it still, obviously you're gonna lose that fruit bud at the end, but it's common practice to leave short lengths that are terminated in a fruit bud because they're not then gonna grow away vigorously the next year. So the reason we're pruning in the summer is because pruning in the summer encourages the development of fruit buds. If I left this to winter, then removed all this excess growth, that's just gonna encourage vegetative growth the following year. And that's not what we want. Now, I've got quite long shoots on, on these plants. They do often produce a lot of growth, these trees. And it's made worse, I think, this year because during the winter, I did prune them reasonably hard. And I also gave them a good mulch. And I, I don't feed these trees much. I, only every few years and if I feed them too much I get too much of this young growth so I'm a little bit mean to them I don't give them too much food but I did this year and as a consequence I think we've got quite a lot of growth here that needs to be cut away but that I mean that's not a problem at all um, one of the reasons that I don't worry too much about um, things like aphids on the apples and pears is because any damage they've done to this this wood it's all going to be cut out so it's really not a big problem so if we look at this piece of wood here um, well we've got a young a young spur forming here that that's going to produce a fruit bud for next year but and possibly here also. But this piece of wood, it's grown from here this year and I need to cut this back. Now, the basal cluster is simply uh, a collection of tightly packed buds or, or leaves at this time of year that form around the base of new shoots. So you can see that, there's, that these leaves are, are part of this basal cluster so I'm ignoring those. I'm taking the first one above that cluster and I'm cutting back to there. Now you don't want to cut too far past the bud, nor at too crazy an angle. You don't want the bud to shrivel, but you don't want to leave a long length of wood here, which is going to die back. That is not at all helpful. So same thing again, these leaves are part of the basal cluster, um, I'm going to ignore those. That is the first one above the basal cluster and I'm going to cut back to there. And just one more example, so I've got three leaves here that are clustered around the base of this new stem. That is the first bud above the basal cluster, and away it goes. With a mature tree like this one, these have been here for quite some years now, it's very unlikely that there are gonna be any new shoots arising from the single main branch. So almost all of the cuts I make here are gonna be that one leaf beyond the basal cluster. So I, I would expect 99 out of 100 cuts today will be like that. When you're starting a, a new tree though, at that point there will be shoots coming off of the main stem and that's where you need to cut to just three leaves beyond the basal cluster. And I might have one that I could show you. We replaced three of the apple trees and I'm gonna take a look at those and see whether there are any examples there I could use. And I may or may not find an example of a, a short shoot that I want to leave, but I'll have a look. Here's one of the apple trees that I planted in the winter. 
So this is extension growth from this point. I'm going to leave that alone. I'll tie that into the cane there. And this one's just produced the one side shoot at the moment. It's got some short growth on, on the others. In fact, they look like they're terminated in fruit buds already. So that's not bad. Now, as it happens, here's an example of a fairly short shoot that is terminated in a fruit bud. So it's actually entirely reasonable for me to leave this one alone. The alternative would be to prune this back. So if I zoom in a little bit, so if I were going to cut this back, there's the basal cluster. I would take one, two, three, and I would cut this shoot back here. So I just leave those three buds or three leaves above that basal cluster and subsequent growth coming off of this stub then that would be cut back as usual to just a single leaf. But I think because this is, well it's, it's barely six inches long and it's terminated in a fruit bud, I think I'm going to leave that one alone. Now our neighbouring tree has some issues. This was the growing point and well, I don't know what's happened here but that has died back. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just cut that wood back to this, this bud here and I will allow that to regrow next year. Hopefully I'll get a new leader starting here. This one is trying to take over and replace it. I suppose I could allow it, but I don't really want to. And then I've got this shoot here. So this one is probably, I don't know, is that a fruit bud at the end? It may or may not be, but this one is far too long, much too long. So again, I'm, I'm going to take, that's the basal cluster and one, two, there's a third there. I will take that off here. And this is going to be the start of, hopefully, a nice spur system here. I've just got to decide what to do about these branches. Ah, well, actually, I could cut this old one out and leave that new one in place. I think I'll do that. That's probably the neatest solution to this problem. Yeah, I can just tie that in now and just leave that as the start of our first spur system. The third and final one of our replacement trees. It's produced a short length here. That appears to be terminated in a fruit bud. I will leave that. It's produced a longer one here. This is not terminated in a fruit bud. So one, two, three past the basal cluster and gone. Down the bottom we've got, well this is quite a weak shoot really, and there's no fruit bud there, so uh, one, two, three, and away. Okay, so I'm back on the pears again, and the apples, the mature apples are in exactly the same sort of state, so there's quite a lot of growth to cut off. But now I expect it will be all following that simple rule one leaf past the basal cluster. So I'll get on with this and when I'm finished they're going to look quite different. Something I should have mentioned is occasionally you'll look at a branch and there won't be that cluster of leaves at the base in which case just ignore that and, and cut one or three buds or leaves above the the base of the branch. Now occasionally the leaves will be gone so um, sometimes one or two of the leaves are missing usually at this time of year the leaves are there and you can just count the leaves but the buds we're talking about are those that appear in the leaf axil so um, if it's lost a few of the leaves lower down then you need to look at the buds rather than leaves so when you're cutting whether it's three or one bud above the base. Just bear in mind that sometimes that basal cluster is not prominent 
and occasionally some of the leaves might be missing and you need to look for the, the buds themselves rather than the, the leaves. So, Well that's the pears more or less finished now and you can see that they're much tidier. As you can see here there's a mountain of growth that I've taken off of these trees and I've got the apples to do yet. And as you can see, looking down that row there, these plants are a lot tidier than they were before. And you can see a lot more of the fruit, which means the sun can get to it a lot better. And that'll be ripening, I suppose, starting in about a month's time. We are quite late this, this year, so I'm sure it will be a little bit delayed compared with last year. Now I mentioned those short lengths that you can leave if they're terminated in a fruit bud. But of course the question is what is a fruit bud and what is a growth bud? Well fortunately on apples and pears it's usually pretty easy to tell the difference. So here we've got a short length of new wood and it hasn't grown very far this year which is perfect but this fat round bud on the end that is a fruit bud, there's no doubt about it. That is a really large bud. There's another fruit bud here, terminating this very short spur. Now I don't know how well these will show up, but you may see that that bud there, it's small, it's narrow, it's a lot more pointed. That one is a growth bud. And there's another very small growth bud. And here we have another short spur terminated in a fruit bud. Now sometimes these are a little bit more rounded on the end than they are on this particular specimen. But this, um, there's just no way to confuse them here because the fruit buds are very much larger than the growth buds. So that's the pears done and undoubtedly I will have missed a few of the um, new, new shoots. I always do and I can just take those out in the winter. You don't have to be too fussy about it so long as you've got the majority of them it'll be fine. So I'm going to do exactly the same now with the apples and the apples probably are a little bit behind the pears in terms of um, whether the shoots have finished growing or not so there's there's a chance there may be a little bit more regrowth on those I usually get very little on the pears. They tend to stop growing sooner than the apples do. But I think it's still okay to prune those today. So I will get on and finish the apples. But that is all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.